Hey everybody, welcome back to Everyday Journey. Today we're going to show how I'm going to modify this solar motion sensor light or solar pendant light that you can get on Amazon, eBay. Um, they're not very expensive, uh, but it's basically a solar powered or solar charged rechargeable flashlight if you think of it that way. Um, it has basic components, it has the lights, it has the battery, and it has a motion sensor, and it has a um, it has a remote control with it, so it has an IR sensor in it. And we're gonna modify this thing to make it work for our needs. So this room right here is completely dark most of the time, um, especially at night. Right now I've got a side door that's open, so it lets light in here. Um, and the camera is sitting on our stairwell. It's going down into this area. So this is our access to our basement. And sometimes, you know, this is the outside door going in, and then we have an inside door that goes the rest of the way into our basement. We do laundry down here. And I want to try to light up the entire area, in, in this room included, um, and the stairwell, and the front stoop. So that anytime you want, you can walk out, it'll turn on, come down the steps, everything's lit, come on down, and it's still lit in this room as well, and then have it to where you can turn it on again because it only stays on for 15 seconds. Have it to where you can turn it on again from inside this room. So let me show you what comes with this thing real quick, and then I'll give you a, a view from the outside so that you can see exactly what all I'm working with. All right, sorry about it's so dark, but we're in my basement. And here's the box that it comes in. Here's our solar panel with the cable that comes with it. Here is our light and our remote control. Here is our motion sensor on the light. Here's the on off button. And here is our infrared sensor. All right, so you can see the light right up here. I've got it in a position that works well for turning on whenever you walk out the door and as you come up these steps right here. These are the steps that go down to my basement. And it works great except for the fact that if you're coming out of the basement and it's dark, you can't see anything in that room down there. It's completely dark. Even during the day when I have the door closed, it's completely dark. And uh, so what I need to do is keep the motion right where it's at. So it activates up here where we're walking around. And then try to get it to where the remote, which as you can see, you can turn it off and on and uh, try to get it to where the remote will work to activate it downstairs so that when you're down there and it's off you can push the button and get it to turn on so that you can walk up the stairs safely until it gets to a point where it will stay on on its own because of the motion sensor so now we got to actually take it apart and do what we need to do to get that motion or not the motion sensor but the uh, the IR sensor that's inside it downstairs. So let me show you how to do that. At the same time, we're also going to take the lights off um, because what I want to do is there are four lights and I can probably wire up one over near the doorway, one over here near the stairwell, and then put the other two in that room because like I said, it's really dark down there. So we're going to try to do all those things at the same time. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to test out and see if that IR sensor, once it's separated from the main device and then wired up with an extension wire going all the way down to where I need it to, make sure that it still works. Because if it doesn't, then this whole thing is not going to work at all. And we might as well go ahead and get another light like this to put in that room. So let's go ahead and do that first. So all you need is a couple of Phillips screwdrivers. You do need a small one so that you can actually get to these screws here in the front. There are four of them. Those we're going to take off first. And that will set it down. And we should be able to lift the back off. Now inside here we have our 18650 batteries. Um, before we mess with the circuit board, we'll go ahead and disconnect those. So we got to take off this cover. There are two screws that hold this Hold the bracket that holds the batteries in. Now, when you take out these batteries, I know you really can't see it very much, but there's a minus and a plus. 
both of these batteries are going in parallel so that this will equal up to six and a half volts. And the red wire, the red lead up here, that is your positive side. So make sure when you put them back that you put that red wire, put the positive side up to the, the correct place. So now we're actually inside it. We need to go ahead and take out the circuit board. There's only two screws holding the circuit board. And one thing you have to watch out for is that the sensors on the other side, <coughs> the sensors actually have a rubber piece over the top of them. So it makes this push out some. Makes it a little more difficult to put it back in later. But now we can see our black part here is our sensor for the infrared for the remote. We have our push button on the other side and we have our motion sensor in the center. So what we need to do now is take this IR sensor off. That way we can put it in a different location. Just pay attention to the way that it's in here so that you make sure all the wires get connected up the exact same way. And to make this easier, I'm going to go ahead and remove all the lights. That way we can have this whole thing sitting down without the, the front part of the cover. And all these are is a long bolt or screw. And it has a lock washer, a neoprene washer, or neoprene nut on the other side. like so, and that neoprene is what helps keep it from loosening. And now everything lays flat. All right, let's put some batteries in this beast and see if that actually works or not. So you can see we got light, which means I didn't mess anything up yet. As you can see, using the remote, nothing works because the infrared sensor's down there. So I'm gonna go down there and see if I can't turn it off using this and see if it makes sure it works. All right, I'm going to turn it off, and it's working. Turn it back on, and it's working. So this is about 20 feet of cable. And at first I had issue with the fact that I've run two, two, two cables that have four wires each, and I had it hooked up to the wrong cable. So going through and double checking everything, and now it, now it definitely works. So. Now it's a matter of uh, putting, it, putting it up in place and then extending the lights out as far as I need them to go too. All right, so go ahead and pull the batteries back out now that we know that infrared sensor works. 
and then we will extend our lights. So because I don't have any of my soldering stuff here, desoldering things and getting all the excess solder off is kind of a pain. So I'm going to actually cut the lights. I think one of them I'm going to leave connected to this because it is in a good location for that. So we'll cut, leaving some excess. There's one of the lights off. Second and third. Make sure I still have one connected. Yes, I do. All right. So now we got the lights, except for the one that's going to stay. And now I need to wire up the other ones. So each of these black and red wires, I'm going to have to splice the ends to the existing wire that I'm going to use. And uh, I'm going to leave this wire just for communication with the infrared sensor. And the other wire that I ran into that location, I'll go ahead and put on one of these. And then the other two wires, or the other two lights, will be connected to one wire since it has four, four or one cable with four, four wires going through it. I'm going to use two for one of them and two for another. And I'll just extend it out long enough, cut it, wire up one light, and then keep going, and then wire up the second light. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick. Well, they didn't strip as easily as I thought, so I'm going to have to solder them instead because one of them broke loose. So, not a problem. Uh, I'm just basically going to solder. I'm going to use black for black. I'm going to use white for red. And then over here, I'm going to use blue for black and brown for the red. And I'm going to just solder them to these that are going across the top here. Um, the one down here, hopefully I can strip that and go ahead and connect it to the one single light on its own. So we'll see how that goes. So here's my IR sensor. And the motion sensor doesn't work down here. So we got to turn it on from the basement. And there we go. We got light. You can see ahead of us there's the one light that I have wired in this room and then over here to the side I've got the other one lit up and it lights up this room pretty well so let's go ahead and go upstairs now as we're going up the stairs somewhere about right here the infrared or correction the motion sensor will pick it up and will stay on so it's not a problem this thing only stays on for about 15 seconds though there's the one I have it just connected to the main unit. It works fine, points in the direction I need it to go. The other one, I've actually got a wire. It runs all the way over here to this light and it lights up near the door. So it helps us whenever we need to open up the, the door with the keys and all that. So as you can see, it'll stop after 15 seconds and then you move around a little and it'll come back up. Well, there you see. It works fine with the motion sensor upstairs. The, when you're downstairs and you're out of range of the motion sensor, now you can use the, the, the infrared photo eye so that you can actually turn it on down there, be safe coming up the stairs, and have no issues. So hopefully this gave you some good ideas. I know the implementation of it wasn't the best. It could have been done a lot better, but it's good enough for me. It doesn't have to look pretty, it just has to work. So if you got any questions about it, send them my way. I love to read them and I'll definitely try to answer if I can. 
And until next time, y'all take care.